Welcome to Mysteries, Myths, and Legends. I'm Taylor. I'm Savannah. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday, everybody. It is the last day of August today. Ooh, spooky vibes. We're we're officially welcoming in the fall season. Happy Halloween. Un- unofficially. <laughs> officially happy Halloween. Yeah. I've already um, decorated for Halloween, personally. Really? Yep. See, I Not don't... everything, but... Yeah. Did you get Stefan out? Um. Well, he's... No. But I got him oh. down, so he's preparing to get out. I just have to go get a different extension cord. Mm-hmm. Currently, the one is all used up with lights, but they're purple and orange. They're very cute. Oh, yeah. I bet half of the people listening don't know who Stefan is, but... Oh, my gosh, guys. I'll have to... Okay, when I put him out, I'll take a picture of him. He's my little ghost, um, me and Savannah's. We got it when we were living together. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, he's a little inflatable ghost, and his name is Stefan, and I named him Stefan after my biology professor. <laughs> For no reason. Is he, is he a ghost, or is he, like, a reaper? He's a grim reaper, but I call him a ghost. Yeah. I mean, he does kind of look like a ghost. Mm-hmm. Too, and every so. day, like, when I, like, would walk through the front door, I kick him. Yeah. I honestly don't know how he hasn't popped yet, but we love Stefan. Yeah, we do. Um, but yeah, I don't have any Halloween decorations yet. I still Ooh. haven't really decided how I'm going to decorate. You should get the 70 you know? foot skeleton from Lowe's. Ooh, I don't know about that one. <laughs> I really want that, but I could never spend that money on it. Yeah, but. I was just going to say, we're taking donations. <laughs> right. I really so it can need be, it. So it can be on your lawn, not on mine. I my would love it. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess, do you have anything else to say for this Um, intro? No, I don't. I guess we can get right on into it. Okay. Get into it, yeah. (laughs) Don't you? (laughs) Exactly. So, this week, I have a mystery for us. Ooh, dun dun dun. So, have you ever heard of D.B. Cooper? The name is ringing a bell, but I don't really know anything more than the name. Okay, well, D.B. Cooper, a.k.a. Dan Cooper, um, was a plane hijacker. Oh. Yes. Um, Or a pirate in the sky. Oh, okay. If if you will. (laughs) Okay, I will. Mm Mm-hmm. So... Let me let me get right in, on into this story. So on November 24th of 1971, which was the day before Thanksgiving, um, a man walked into the Portland International Airport and bought a ticket to flight 305 to Seattle, Washington. Um, and it was with Northwest Orient Airlines. And it was only a 35-minute flight. Okay. That's a really short flight. Yes, it's one of the shortest ones, like, over over there mm-hmm. <laughs> in that yeah. area. Um, I think it, it's mainly, like, a connecting one, maybe? I don't really know. Yeah. Um, but anyways, he bought a ticket. He said his name was Dan Cooper, um, and he's described as a middle-aged man, and he was carrying a black briefcase and a brown paper bag. He was wearing business attire. A white shirt, black tie, and, you know, he just looked businessy. So, this guy, Dan, he boarded the plane, took his seat, and he got a drink. He got a bourbon and 7-Up. Ew. Which, okay. Are you kidding me? I was like, I didn't know this was a drink, but apparently it was, like, a drink people had. I'm gonna throw up. (laughs) Ew. Ew. Um, Ew. That sounds so nasty. No, I mean... It does. Let's try maybe, it though. But bourbon, you said? Yeah, bourbon and seven up. Hmm. Uh, okay, I according guess I can't what I was, knock it before I try it. See, according to what I was like reading, like businessy, sophisticated, sophisticated <laughs> in quotes, people yeah. would drink this in like the 70s. Mm, okay. You know? So I don't trust them, then it'll be good, but I will try it. We can make it next time we're together. Yeah, maybe. We shall see. Um, and he was also um, smoking because you could still smoke, like, everywhere then, even oh, yeah. on an enclosed airplane. That's so crazy. So which crazy. is insane because you just imagine Mm-mm. being in an airplane surrounded by cigarette smoke, just like. No. I would be having an asthma attack, first of all. Right. Like, how is this not a problem? I mean, I guess. It was. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. They had, like, 
they probably had like one non-smoking section which is like always such a joke because it's like they'll travel over there obviously. exactly <laughs> exactly that's so crazy i'm so happy that it's not like that today i know i know um yeah so this guy he was a smoker so he he had a, a few cigarettes but um while he was sitting there um and one of the flight attendants walked by and he passed her a note and at first she thought that he was just giving her his number yeah that's what i had um, too yeah and so she just took it and it's like oh okay and ignored it basically but he's like like when she walked by again um he was like uh you should you should probably take a look at that note <laughs> because i have a bomb uh, oh no <laughs> Yes. So she opened the note and read it and it basically said like, oh, he has a bomb and that she should come and sit near him. And Ew. he showed her the bomb like it was in the briefcase. So he opened it up and it was like, looked like sticks of dynamite with like, you know, wires and I don't know. Yeah. Like a, a bomb. bomb. <laughs> <laughs> um... And so he started, like, making demands and said that, like, to relay them to the pilots and stuff. So she did that. She, like, went over and told them what was happening. And, you know, surprisingly, none of the passengers were really aware of what was going on. Honestly, that's for the better. Mm-hmm. I would I be freaking out if I had heard that conversation, like, happen. Right. Like, maybe, like, one or two by them sort of knew what was going on, but, like... It wasn't, like, announced to the whole plane or anything, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> so, Dan Cooper, he um, asked for some money. He um, ended up extorting $200,000 in ransom. What? Uh -huh. Oh, my God. And that's equal to $1,338,000 today. Whoa. That's insane. Yeah. So basically over a million dollars he got um, in today's money. <clears throat> and he also wanted, um, he wanted the money and he also wanted four parachutes, which I'm not really Why? familiar with parachutes, but he said he wanted like two front and two back. Like, I don't really know <laughs> what that I have, means. No, I have no idea what that means. Yeah, but, you know, he, that's what he asked for. And he also, like... Apparently, he wrote on the note, no funny business. And I just think that's kind of <laughs> That's kind of funny. Kinda funny. To write. <laughs> no funny business. Mm -hmm. um, so, they ended up landing in Seattle. Well, actually, they, they circled around for a little bit first because they had to get his things ready for him. Um, and they told the passengers that they were like technical difficulties you, or something oh there's just like something going on that they had to you know wait yeah. a few minutes That's so but then they ended time. up i know it's like but i mean they didn't know what was going on though, i know so. but just to think back like now like and know what happened yeah Ew. <clears throat> um but they ended up landing and they released all the passengers Yay. um in seattle where they're you know supposed to be so nobody really even knew anything Wow. Um, and authorities on land, they ended up bringing him his money and the parachutes. And he asked to be flown to Mexico City. Why are but, they listening to this guy? <laughs> well, because they didn't want, you know, anything to happen. Like, him to actually set off the bomb and then, like, the airline is, Ooh, yeah, I get that. you know in trouble for these people dying you know and yeah well they better still not listen to this man and take him to mexico <laughs> well i mean okay so they would have right but <laughs> why would they have <laughs> <laughs> well they have to listen to him i don't know yeah they no i know, get it i get it he's crazy do. yeah i know i mean that is hard though because it's just like when you land wouldn't you think they would come on and That's take him saying. take him away take him but i mean i don't know you don't you don't know, like, if the bomb's going to go off or That's something. True. And it's just, like... Even worse at the airport, honestly. It, yeah. 
I mean, back then, obviously, the fact that this guy went on the plane with one, like... Facts. That's the, facts. The security's already super low. Mm-hmm. So and wait, like, what year did you say it was again? I forgot. Uh, 1971. Okay. That's crazy. That's when my mom was born. <laughs> my mom, too. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to our moms. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> um, anyways. Um, he... Okay, so back to the story. <laughs> He got his money and parachutes, and they they did agree to fly him somewhere, but so they dumb. couldn't make it to Mexico City with um, they wouldn't have enough fuel. Yeah, makes for sense. a full trip there because he also wanted them to go at a a lower height and a slower speed. Why? So he could jump out. Uh, basically, because any higher they would have to put cabin pressure and stuff. Okay, I. This man, he's making me so mad. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, at the at the height that he wanted to go, <clears throat> um, they wouldn't have enough fuel. So they ended up agreeing to go to Reno, Nevada. Okay. <clears throat> so they took off to go to Reno. And partway through the flight, he jumped out the back. Mm-hmm. Um, but before this, he actually told the flight attendants to go into the cabin with the pilots so he was the only one um you know in like the main part of the plane yeah um and so he was like there by himself and they didn't they couldn't really see what he was doing at all Mm -hmm. because there was no window or anything either um so he did end up uh There's, like, stairs that go out the back of the plane. So, he lowered the stairs and um, jumped out the back. Wow. With with the money and the parachute. They gave him cash? Yeah. Yeah, they gave him cash. Um, I did forget to mention, the cash that they gave him were, it was all in $20 bills. Oh, my God. There's no way he had that (laughs) amount of money. It was... 20 pounds. <laughs> oh, what? And he jumped out of the freaking plane with it? Yeah. Yep. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But also, this is what gets me. It's like, he apparently jumped out somewhere near southwestern Washington. So, like, not even far from where no, they started. they just got up in the air. <laughs> right. And they are like, yeah, like, I don't know why he didn't wait longer, but whatever. He... Jumped out over Washington from what they can gather. I mean, because they didn't really see it, but that's where they're guessing. By the um, the air pressure in the cabin and stuff. and Yeah, that um, makes sense. That's where they guess he lowered the stairs, you know. Mm-hmm. So he jumped out and he was never seen again. <sighs> Bro. So. Absolutely not. So, yeah. Absolutely not. That. Mm-mm. Okay, before I go into more, like, what do you think? Mm-mm. What do you think it. happened? I'm so sorry. I don't know if I believe any of it. Any of it? Uh-uh. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I just don't know. No, I'm just kidding. I, uh, I just, I really find it hard to believe that they would not arrest him once he got off the plane. That's, honestly, that's I feel honestly, like in today's world, they would. I guess you're but right. I guess, I guess it was, but that's so crazy. He was going to blow up a plane. So it's just so hard for me to believe that, okay, I just don't, that he, they would put him in another plane where where more people are going to be at risk. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean. Well, I mean, it was the same plane. Okay. But they just took all the passengers out. Yeah. Okay, but what about the flight attendants? Were they not scared? Oh, they were. <laughs> I'm just, okay. I guess I have nothing more to say, but I'm just okay. in shock. But, I mean, I guess, how would they find him? He just walked, he walked, I mean, how did he land? In That's a tree? what I'm saying. Okay, so this is, this is my question to you. Before I go any farther, like, what do you think happened to him? I mean, did I would he have land? to assume he did broke he both of his legs. It? I don't okay. know, maybe he died. I have to say that maybe he didn't make the landing. But he did have four parachutes, so. Yeah, I think they, he did leave. One oh. or two of them. I don't know. He, Interesting. They did have that for evidence. Hmm. Well, I feel like somebody wouldn't survive it. But also this man got away with so much. So maybe he did just walk off. 
and live a different life. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, also, the fa- the whole thing where you're saying um, he should have been arrested right when um, they landed, yeah. right? Like, I don't know, though, because if you think about a bomb, like, you could die from that if you're trying to arrest him. <laughs> I don't know. It's really hard. No, I mean, that's a good point, too. Like, that's what that's what they got to think about, because that is just... I don't, I don't know. I mean, that's I hard. Know. I don't know. I'd be like, get the bomb squad up in here, They have man. to, like, somehow get... But they have to get him away from it. Yeah, you know? I guess I didn't realize that he's just standing here with it on his hand. Okay, but... Yeah, he literally I'm sure it. that you're going to get into this more, but, like, he was just willing to die? Like, this is the last thing? Well, I mean, I don't really get into any of that, so I, <sighs> I, don't, I don't know. I just have so many questions. Savannah, this is just... My brain is... All over the place trying to think about this. Okay, so I'm only part way through, and you're gonna have more questions. Great, we love that. Okay, okay, let's let's get into the investigation a little bit. So the FBI investigated this for 45 years. That sounds about right, honestly. <laughs> if I um, if I have to say so myself. Yes. Uh, so it was suspended in July of 2016. Wow. Um. And they, over this time, they called it Norjack, short for Northwest Hijacking. Yeah. This man really got away with it. Basically. Um, But they they reached no definitive conclusions. So, like, regarding his identity or his fate. So they don't even know if he's dead or alive, and they don't know who it was. DB, if you're out there, please come be a guest on the podcast. I'll pay you like you $5. Imagine? Can you <laughs> literally imagine? Hey, guys, I'm welcoming our first guest, Back from the Dead. Okay, yeah. but also, he was, like, in his 40s back then, and it's been 50 years. So he would be around 80. Yeah, so I don't know. 80, 90. If he's still around. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that he is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, but, okay. So this FBI <clears throat> investigation... Um, they've had, like, many theories over the years, but nothing really for sure. Um, at first, they really thought that he could be a paratrooper from the military. Mm-hmm. Um, but after investigating more, they think that he was probably an inexperienced parachuter. Okay. Um, the FBI says that he most likely did not survive the jump because of, like, the conditions. So I didn't mention all of this before, so it might actually affect the way you think about this whole thing but by the time that they were up in the air it was nighttime right and it was november okay it's cold yes um yeah (laughs) over near washington it's very cold, cold um and dark and it was actually a little bit rainy too oh good the perfect very, conditions to jump out of a plane and walk yeah. through the middle of the forest. Yeah, very bad. Very bad conditions. So that factor, there's also lack of proper equipment. So, like, he, um, his clothes were just, it's just, like, business attire. And, yeah. I mean, if you're flying through the air, I don't know, his shoes were probably, like, loafers. They probably would have just flown off, maybe. I don't, yeah. I don't really know. I'm so confused what about. this man was thinking was going to happen. No, I know. I, mm. I do actually have something at the end that might connect to that, but we'll we'll get to that later. Um, some people say that the parachutes he was using weren't really good for steering. Okay. So that is, you know, not something like an experienced person maybe would choose i don't know yeah did we did we find the parachutes well i mean he he's the one who requested them so they knew what they gave him yeah i just meant like in the forest anywhere uh no Hmm. um his landing area was also the wilderness so of course it was you know that's like another reason they think he didn't survive he just landed into the trees like yeah and he also seemed to have like a lack of knowledge of his landing area which all honestly like i don't really know why they say that but that's what yeah they, how they how they came saying. to that conclusion yeah um and also this okay so this is a big clue that sort of helped them a little bit um part of the ransom money was actually found eventually okay 
Okay. So after years and years of it, like, it had never turned up being used or, like, found anywhere in the woods or anything. Because, like, they, they took down the serial numbers, yeah. right? So they would know these yeah. are the bills that we gave him. Um, but part of this money was found along the banks of the Columbia River. Oh, okay. So, like, ni- he really did not make it. I mean, I don't Possibly. know. It's a possibility, but it's still just not for sure. Um, I mean, it also could have just flown off of him. Right. In the exactly. air. Because, I mean, as I said, that, that has to be 20 pounds of cash. That's a mm-hmm. lot of cash. I'm positive he didn't make it at, to the ground with all that on him. Yeah. If that's one thing I know about this case, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that's what I kind of think, too. But it. Okay, so this money was found in 1980. So, like, almost yeah. 10 years after. Wow. And it was $5,800. Boy, where's the rest of the money? See, that's I'm, nothing compared to the mo- amount of money. That's why I'm, that's why I agree with you. Like, it probably, it could have, fl- like, fallen out of his bag. Or it something. had to. Because that's none of it. Uh-huh. That's like $5. <laughs> compared to what it is. I'm yeah. sh- I'm shocked honestly. So they to this day have never found any of the other money. No. That is so weird. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um. So this money though, it like I know you would probably say like, oh, if I found that, I would just like take it, you know. But it 100%. was like one hundred percent. Would you not? Well, when I described this, it was buried in the sand basically, mm-hmm. and it was moldy and deteriorating. Personally, so it's like not not really. Care. It's not really usable, though. I would make a way to make it usable. I would do anything. Because they, they have some of it, like, in evidence, and I've seen pictures. It's really just, like, no. slivers. Yeah. No, to be fair, if I did see it washed up on the beach and it looks like it had been there for a while, I'd be like, mm, that might be connected to something bad. And yeah. I might call I mean, it's place. literally, like, wads of cash with rubber bands around it. Um, yeah. <laughs> you're going to call suspicious. the FBI or something. Yeah. It's a little more suspicious. <laughs> mm-hmm. So this money, like, was found, but um, it was actually found by um, a dad and his son were at the beach for the day, and the son found it. Wow, so, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and this is, like, pretty much all that was recovered. Wow. <laughs> it's not even of the money, but, like, of anything. What about the bomb? Um... I think he left that there. Like on the plane? Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty okay, sure. Like, he I just, just wonder, left like, it. was it real? You know, I never really got to that part. I should have looked that up. Because, hmm. like, what if it was fake the whole time? That's what I was kind of thinking, too. Like, that would have been so funny. <laughs> Not funny, but, like, you know. <laughs> so, like I said, this is so funny. <laughs> this is just so funny. But, like, he scanned them. You know? Yeah, that would have been the true uh, scammer behavior. No, but I'm not sure if it's fake or not. Um, yeah. Hmm. But um, he, the mo- the rest of the money never turned up, which, like, suggests that it was never spent, really. Um, but I guess that's not really for sure. I don't know. Because, uh, like, how do you track that with, like, serial numbers on money? That's what I'm saying. You're telling me every time somebody, like, what? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> we have some we have like numbers at every store you have to look at the cash before yeah i don't know i don't know i, ju- I just don't kind of believe that the money's gone either like i feel like it's just like in some walmart right now <laughs> could be <laughs> i mean it's super old though it's probably destroyed by now but. yeah true um oh and another thing about this money is that it was um where it was recovered is not at all where they thought that he landed Oh. So that sort of threw them hmm. off. Um, it's because it was like it was like 20 miles down the river from where they thought he landed. Interesting. Um, and also the water, like the stream of the river was going the opposite way. So it couldn't have been like floating down really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. That's interesting. But also, um, they. Oh, oh I was just going to say that I, I looked up if the bomb was real or not. And it says that they don't know. So what does that mean that they don't know? Well, yeah, I don't know. (laughs) 
Yeah, I guess we don't. <laughs> Nobody knows anything. Yeah. Um, hmm. Interesting. Well, they, their suggestion, um, what they think happened to this money is it got, like, caught on a boat and was dragged down the river mm-hmm. um, and then ended up down there 20 miles. Okay. Because, like, other if it were to just, like, float down there, it would have went the opposite way. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. I guess I believe that. Um, yeah. And they also searched, like, the rest of that area for the rest of the money because they're like, okay, well, if this money traveled down there, maybe the whole bag did. Yeah. But they couldn't find it anymore. Hmm. Weird. So, so yeah, many very, weird things going very on. Very suspicious here. Okay. So the rest of the evidence they have, um, you know, he did write notes to them. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, to pass back and forth and stuff, but he took them. He requested oh. that he k- get to keep all of them because he's like, you're not going to have my handwriting. Yeah, he's like, you're not catching me. <laughs> uh-huh. But they did have his um, cigarette butts. Uh-oh, DNA. And there were eight of them. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> On the 35-minute uh-huh. flight? Well, no. it. I mean, it was hours because, oh. you know. Uh, yeah, you mean at the end of the whole shebang. Yeah, at the end of the <laughs> whole thing. It had Got been, it. like, a few hours. But, like. I mean, that is kind of a lot, but I guess not really. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and they also kind of had the glass that he was drinking out of, but it was mixed up with the others, so they couldn't be sure which one was his. Yeah. So that was out of the question. So really, j- they just had, like, the cigarettes. And that was sort of enough, like, for DNA. Oh, okay. Um, but they didn't really get anything off of that. Dang. <laughs> because, um, you know, I guess he wasn't in the system with DNA or anything. Yeah. <clears throat> Plus, but they DNA were I, at that time really was not popping off yet, not mm-hmm. yet. Yeah, I mean it had been forty five years though to like investigate. Oh yeah, that's facts. Dang, he must have just not been um, in the system at all. This this random man decided to do this one day. Exact no exactly, <laughs> and but also, the um, the DNA did help um, you know show that people were innocent that they were trying to. Okay, yeah, that's true. That's very true. Yeah, so that, it, it did help with that, at least. Um, okay, so, what else? Okay, so they, after, after this happened, um, it changed a lot about airlines and stuff. Yeah, as it should. Um, first of all, there were increased hijackings because of this. <laughs> oh, no. Unfortunately, people were copying him. Um, and then people, in newspapers, they started writing about this, um, you know, this one in particular, um, and one of them made a mistake and called him D.B. Cooper instead of Dan Cooper, so that's oh. where he sort of got his name. No this way. New- newspaper that made a mistake. There is no so. way. Yep. That's crazy. <laughs> I wonder what he thinks of that, if he ever knew, if he I ever know. even made it out to see. I know. He's like, guys, no, guys, my name is supposed to be Dan Cooper. <laughs> He's like, actually, that's still a fake name anyway. My name is Matt, but. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, but then after all of that, like the increased hijackings and everything, there were um, stricter procedures in airport security. Mm-hmm. Not even as strict as they are today, but like a little bit more than back then. Because yeah. apparently you could just walk in and just take anything you wanted. Yeah, I mean, that's but, what it sounds like. Yeah. Like, let but, me walk into an air, air, like, plane like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Um, but this caused metal detectors to become a standard and also searching of baggage. Oh. Because before this, you could literally walk on a plane with a gun. And that was fine. Lord, and, that is just... I can't even imagine that. I know. It's, that, it's like, crazy. Like, now we can't even bring soap. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> you have to have the small deodorant. I know, it's crazy. Um, so yeah, this this sort of was the first thing that made people, you know, want to tighten things up. Um, and they also changed uh, designs of aircrafts a little bit because of this. Oh, interesting. Uh, they added these things called Cooper vanes. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, named it after him. Um, this was to prevent the staircase from being lowered while in flight. Oh, wow. I was going to say, I've never even heard of a, like, 
staircase off of a plane. That's why. Because <laughs> of D.B. Cooper. Damn. Yeah, like, I think certain planes have it or used to have it. Um, but then some of them now, they just have, like, the stairs that go over to it, right? Or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Or, yeah. or I don't know. I really don't know either. <laughs> I haven't been on a lot of planes. So. Me neither. <laughs> um... But yeah, so they named that after him, which is cool, I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, and the new measures um, thankfully lowered the amount of hijackings. So, good. Good. <laughs> good, except for every time I get on a plane, I still think it's going to be hijacked. Right. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Every time I'm like, just who has the bomb? Okay, well, the last time I was on a plane, I was like five. So I don't <laughs> think I even thought about that. <laughs> well, good. That's that's good. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, so over the years, the FBI considered over 800 suspects and ended up eliminating all but 24 what from does consideration. That mean? Okay. What do you mean? Like they haven't, like, the, so they have ruled out everybody. They ruled out everybody except for 24 hmm. of them. See, they're just like, what does that mean? Except for 24 of them. Like, these are I the just ones who they're like, oh, well, it could be them for oh. a number of reasons. Interesting. I mean, I get that fact, but I just, I just want to know who it is, man. I know. No. <laughs> I don't know if we'll ever know. Like, I no, I don't think so. we won't at this point. But like, I just feel like the FBI has the power. Like back then, they had the power, but they just didn't do it. But I, mean, I guess I'm thinking of today. Yeah. <laughs> but I just don't know. I feel like they could have done it. But like, really like if know. this happened today, I mean, it wouldn't happen today. But if it did, mate. I don't know. I mean, Maybe. if it happened today, we would 100% find out who it was. <laughs> it would be no question about it. We would find out before the plane, like, they would be on TikTok before the plane even... Oh, my like, God. It would be on TikTok. Like, you know that it would. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe. Um, I am going to... I do have, like, a few of the suspects here that I'm going to list. Oh, and, yes. and you can see if you think that Good. one of them did it. That's what I wanted. Okay. So... The first one I have is Kenny Christensen. Um, so this guy, um, his brother Lyle, what is convinced that he is DB Cooper? Um, <laughs> like and his he started, own brother. Yeah, he started thinking this after he had passed. Oh, interesting. So, yeah, I know it is interesting because like then you can't even ask him. But <laughs> you can't, but also, like, I kind of trust him if he's, like, I think my brother might have been him. Like, you don't just say that. Yeah. I like, mean. That's not a good yeah. thing to be known. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, I wouldn't want somebody, like, I wouldn't want my brother to be D.B. Cooper. Mm-hmm. If he, if you thought he was, would you tell everybody? Like, I don't. Or would you just keep it to yourself? <sighs> like, I would maybe tell the FBI. I don't think, I wouldn't mm-hmm. tell the news. Yeah, I get you. Okay. Well, this guy sort of told everybody. <laughs> okay. Well, then I immediately don't believe him. Because there was, there was a book published by a detective mm. that detailed reasons why he was most likely D.B. Cooper. Hmm. Um, so some of those reasons. He was in the Army. Um, he joined in 1944 and was a trained paratrooper. I thought um, we said that he wasn't a trained paratrooper. See, that's what the FBI thinks, but then other people think otherwise. Okay. So it's really could go either way. Yeah. Um, afterwards, like after he was in the army, he worked for Northwest Orient mm, Airlines, okay. which is the same the airline. Same. Yep. Um, he worked as a mechanic, and then he became a flight attendant. Um, and DB Cooper actually, when he was on the plane. Uh, the flight attendant asked him, like, why are you doing this? <laughs> yeah. Um, and he said that he had a, a grudge and didn't really go into any details. Okay. So, I mean, maybe there's a connection there with the airlines. Yeah. Um, like he, And yeah. Christensen, he was not really satisfied with his pay as a, as a flight attendant. And there were also many strikes going on mm-hmm. like around that time um and that he attended so i mean i don't know i don't know sort of points to it um and he, around that time like 1971 he was uh 45 which is around the age that was described 
Um, he was also 5'8". Um, and D.B. Cooper was described as, like, six foot tall. Mm -hmm. So they were like, well, I don't know. (laughs) Mm, Okay. And he was apparently thinner and had a lighter complexion than D.B. Cooper. Mm -hmm. But, like, I don't know because eyewitness descriptions, they're always, like, hard to go off of because they're not that accurate. Mm -mm. No, you can, like so easily be like swayed one way or the other like especially like in thinking back exactly exactly because they didn't have a picture of this guy they were just like going off of what these people saw yeah exactly um and then most of the reason that this guy was like sort of um this christensen guy was like pushed as like oh well it's probably not him was because they say that it didn't he didn't look like that what but when you line up pictures of him and the like composite drawing of db cooper it does look similar so i don't really know what yeah see that's why i feel like they just really missed the guy like they knew who it was and they messed it up somehow Uh, yeah they could have i mean i don't know um another big thing with this guy is that he spent a lot of money after the hijacking hmm and, like, in cash, and they're like, well, I, we don't really know how he saved up all this cash. Okay. So, don't know. Hmm. And they didn't check his money? Like, what are we talking about, guys? I mean, I don't know. I mean, it was after he was already dead, so. Oh, yeah, I forgot. But. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, well, I have I have two more, two more guys here to talk about. Next one was Ted Braden. And he was a special forces commando um, in the Vietnam War, which, you know, don't really know what that means. But yep, no, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like something. Um, he was in the Vietnam War. He was a master skydiver. Okay. And also a convicted felon. Oh. So, I mean. Interesting. Um, he was one of the military's leading parachutists and... He actually represented the army in international skydiving tournaments, which I didn't even know that was a thing. No, me neither. It's kind of cool. That's very yeah. cool. Um, so, yeah, this guy was, like, really, really good at skydiving and parachuting. So, yeah. he, like, if somebody were to do this, like, this guy would have survived it, at least, you know, if he did it. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to know what to believe, because you either believe that he died jumping out of the plane, which would, like, create a whole different persona if a person, from the person who, like, survived, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if this man did survive, honestly, he had to have some kind of training, in my opinion. Right, right, exactly. So, like, it would be somebody like this. See, I think that's why the, the FBI is saying that he was not skilled, because... Um, they just want to say he died. <laughs> yeah. No, I completely agree. Yeah. I completely agree. Hmm. So, Interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, so this guy, a little bit more, he, um, according to his military record, he made 911 jumps in his Oh my his God, career. that's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. Compared to my zero. <laughs> yeah, zero. Um, exactly. be lucky if I ever have even one. I know. I don't know if I could ever do it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. So, okay, also, 911. Some people do one and get, like, fatally injured or, like, you know. I know. How did he not get hurt a single time? We don't know that he didn't, but he didn't die. Right. So, I mean, like, honestly, I, I think skydiving is relatively safe, which sounds crazy. But, like, just, like, physics and stuff, I think it's, like, really hard to die from it. Like, there's just, like, really freak accidents. Yeah. I, I think so, too. Um, Yeah unfortunate but yeah um so he also had a similar description to the one given by the flight attendants and um he was five eight just like the other guy mm, interesting okay so no tall man here yeah but he could have been a little bit taller because um that was his height taken by the military and that was like without shoes okay so yeah um i don't know um, so yeah, that guy, maybe, he was super, super good at skydiving. That's maybe. like the main thing yeah. <laughs> going for him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then this, I have another, another person to go over. Jack, um, Jack Coughlet. He was a con man. Mm. Started off mm-hmm. strong. Yes, that's strong. <laughs> Ex-convict. And he was also a government informant. 
for a time. Hmm. That kind of makes sense because he did know how to negotiate the terms of his, like, hostage situation pretty well. Yeah, maybe. That's true. Um, But this guy is the one person... I mean, there were other people, too, but just out of the people I'm listing, he was the person to actually claim that he was D.B. Cooper. Oh, okay. So So that makes me immediately not believe him at all. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Um, He wanted to be famous. He... No... Literally, the next thing I have to say, he tried to sell his story to a Hollywood exactly. production company. Exactly. You know, D.B. Cooper, man. Yeah. Get out of here. Yep, yep, yep. Um, he said, he's like, oh, I landed 50 miles southeast of Ariel, Washington. And he said he injured himself and <laughs> lost the ransom money. Okay. <laughs> so that's why he didn't have the money. He lost yeah, it. Makes sense. Um... The drawings of D.B. Cooper, they sort of look like him, but he was older than they thought that D.B. <laughs> Cooper was. So mm-hmm. he was, like, in his 50s, and they thought he was in his 40s. Interesting. So that didn't really match up, but, I mean, they no. could have been wrong. You never know. It's true. Um, and he was also, he was in Portland on the day of the hijacking, and he had leg injuries that could have been from a skydiving mishap. Okay. Okay, this is all so, very interesting. Mm-hmm. I just don't but, know who to believe. Okay, well, this last this last thing I have to say about him, he was interviewed by the FBI, and he included some details that were, like, not part of the story, really. Okay. So they were like, well, you're fabricating it. You're not him. <laughs> interesting. So. Well, you heard so, yeah. it here, folks. It's not him. Yeah. Okay, but that first guy... Yeah, the first guy seems the most the most. Compelling. The first guy's interesting. Mm-hmm. I really kind of believe his brother. Maybe I know. I don't know. There's a there's a whole book about it. I might want to go read the book. That's yeah. That's I kind of want to read the book. Mm-hmm. Um, and there there's a lot of other suspects, but like I don't want to be here listing suspects <laughs> yeah, all day. Forever. So <laughs> yeah, I just pick some. Um, and I do have something else very interesting that I was I sort of mentioned earlier. There is a comic book character called Dan Cooper. Okay. And it was before before this this happened. Okay. So, you know, this leads me to believe that this guy took that name from the comic. 100%. Especially because in the comic, he is a pilot. You stop it right now. And he... Also jumps out of a plane with a parachute. Stop it and right now. And he, um, see this part, I'm not really sure, uh, <laughs> has ransom. I don't know if he has ransom delivered to him in a knapsack, but, like, he has something with a knapsack. Okay. So, like, there's just something connections. With a knapsack. There's connections to this comic to what happened. Yeah. So that's that kind of cool. That's definitely, is that, like, a popular comic or no? Um, it was, um, uh, Dan Cooper was, like, in the Royal Canadian Air Force, so this was, like, a comic okay. in, like, French Canada, and also, um, because it, it was in French, actually. Oh, okay, so, see, I'm just seeing, like, FBI, did we look at the French Canadian suspects? Like- <laughs> see, that's another thing, like, maybe this guy... Um, like, was from Canada and then came right. over. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, he doesn't have to be from the United States. Mm-hmm. Because, like, like how get... else, honestly, how else would he have known about the comic? I guess he could have, like, went and visited, but. Yeah, I guess. That's, that's a little weird. Hmm. Hmm. And the fact that it's kind of close to Canada because it's in, like, you the, know, yeah, Seattle, in the, Washington. Yeah, right? ex- that's what I'm thinking, too, man. Oh. Come on. And, like, what if he just, like, went back to Canada? Like, did we check Canada? (laughs) Like, I'm so being serious. (laughs) Like. I mean, yeah. Could have brought. But also, if he brought the money to a bank in Canada, then, like, they would have checked the serial numbers or something, right? I have no idea how Canada banks work, man. Because I think you can transfer money internationally like that. Like, bring it to a bank and they'll bring you your currency. Yeah, I'm sure that you can. Hmm. hmm. Guys, FBI, if you're listening, did we check Canada? <laughs> like, I'm being so serious. Yeah. I, I need to know. 
Yeah. So, so that's the story of D.B. Cooper. I don't. What do you, you think happened to okay, him? Okay. First of all, I don't know. <laughs> that story just really stressed me out because I just have so many more questions. I I told of you feel, you would. Oh God, Savannah, you really did it to me on this one. I feel like. I feel like he didn't survive. Okay. <laughs> At first, I felt like he didn't survive. Yeah. However, now I'm leaning towards this man is a Canadian and he is, he got away. Like he, I feel like he might've just got away. I mean, I don't know. Hmm. I really don't know what to believe. I have no idea. I have no idea what to believe. But the fact that we didn't find anything of the money makes me kind of believe that maybe he did get away. Yeah. Which is crazy, dude. If you're D.B. Cooper, man, I'm not going to say shout out to you, but you really did it, didn't you? <laughs> I mean, he did hijack a plane without killing oh, yeah. anyone. He didn't hurt anybody. So, Other yeah, he didn't hurt himself. anyone. I mean, um, that's crazy. And also, he he has been, uh, in some of the stuff I saw, they called him like a gen- gentleman. So, is he the air gentleman pirate? <laughs> He's the air gentleman pirate. He's just another steed. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I love that they called him the air pirate. That's really funny. Yeah. Well, that was that's kind of my my little touch to it. Oh, you really? They didn't call him that. I've seen. I saw some things that were like similar to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I love it. I'm air obsessed piracy. with it. We yeah. love air piracy. No, we so. don't. No, we don't. Please do not do that. <laughs> yeah, we don't. We don't love it. We don't. Love it. <laughs> no. We just. It's just a, the concept. <laughs> we love the concept. <laughs> okay. Anyways, wow. Okay, that first of all was. I feel like that might have been your biggest story ever, Savannah. That was huge. Yeah, see, I, I said last week that I was going to come back with something big, and you I did. did. <laughs> you really did. Wow. I'm Honestly, I'm in shock. Like, my story's lame compared to that. That's crazy. No, it's, it's no, not. No, it's not. Lame. It's actually crazy, too. <laughs> it's really crazy, too. But, man, D.B. Cooper. Like, I really just want to know what his real name is. I know. Stan I know. Lee. He's, he wrote Marvel <laughs> Comics. Oh my I'm God. just kidding. Okay, anyways. So, moving on from that mystery. We love a good mystery, and I also really hate it. Um, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> we, we love and hate a mystery. Literally. You know? So, I, thank goodness, do not have a mystery. I have a haunting, and I do have all the answers with this one. So, Yay. thank goodness. <laughs> um, so, today, I'm covering the legend of the San Haven Sanatorium. Dun, dun, dun. Another sanatorium. Um, I had to do this because, first of all, we don't have any listeners from North Dakota, and that's really weird because we have listeners all around the world, and so I feel like North Dakota is being a little fake towards us, so I'm doing this story from North Dakota to lure in the North Dakotians. Okay, good. I really <laughs> hope we get, like, a few because, yeah, no. like, we, we have listeners in every single other state. I well, know. Actually, I think it's North and South Dakota, right? Okay. Dakotaans? I don't know what is going on. Yeah. Um, But... <laughs> Honestly, there's not that many people that live out there. So if you live out there, shout out. Yeah, um, shout out. But anyway, so jumping right in, let me set the scene for you. It is 1912, and we are in Dunseith, North Dakota. Sorry if I said that wrong. It's spelled really weird. So, <laughs> sorry. Okay. Um, so it's 1912, and that is when the San Haven Sanatorium was first built. Um, and it actually remained up and running as a hospital and eventual asylum for 75 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, tragically, due to, like, the number of patients flooding in and the really harsh conditions going on in the sanatorium, the place closed down in 1997. Um, so, yeah. Um, when it was first opened up, it was just, like, a regular hospital. Um, you know, nothing, nothing too crazy. And, the town that it's in is like kind of in the middle of nowhere so like Mm -hmm. it was kind of just a little hospital at first um but in the early 1960s the building um oh no i skipped so many lines whoopsie that's okay i've done that before too (laughs) i was like wait we have not gotten to that part of the story yet okay yeah so basically in the early 1900s tuberculosis huge problem Yes. Like, (laughs) we know this. We've covered this huge issue. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's when the hospital kind of took a turn from, like, regular hospital to primarily a tuberculosis hospital. And 
The reason for that is because this place, as I said, is in the middle of nowhere, but it's also in the mountains in North Dakota. So it's like very beautiful, like crisp air. You know what I'm talking about? Like the fall crisp mm-hmm. morning. That was the air. Yeah. Like, didn't they say like when, when tuberculosis was a big thing, like they said the air could cure you? Yeah. They were like the like, best treatment is like fresh air, quote unquote. Yeah. Make it make sense. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, but that's what they I said. Mean, Honestly, like, if you don't know much about science, it seems like <laughs> it would, right? Honestly, breathing fresh air does make me feel better, so. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I think know. that just might be the vitamin D from the sunlight, but, you know, who knows? Um, so, but, yeah, that's why it became, like, a really booming, popular tuberculosis hospital, because it had really good air to breathe in, which is really funny, but that's actually why. Um, so, it was a tuberculosis hospital for a hot minute. Um, until, thank goodness, the cure was found, um, for tuberculosis. And so eventually, you know, it came and went as a tuberculosis, a tuberculosis hospital. Many people died. Most people died. (laughs) Um, (laughs) tragically, not funny at all. Um, yeah, it was said like, if you were going to this place, San Haven, like you're not coming back. Oh, wow. So mm, that's not good. So we already know baseline. It's haunted. It's haunted real bad. Mm -hmm. Um, So, but then after, you know, the cure for tuberculosis was found, they didn't need a tuberculosis hospital anymore. So in the 1960s, the building was changed to an asylum. Um, Yeah. So once it became the asylum slash mental hospital slash sanatorium, um, that also was like in very high demand at the time. They... It quickly became, like, way too overcrowded. And they had over 900 patients, um, which is, like, far too many people. And just to, like, kind of explain to you how many, before before they, like, reopened when it was just chilling, there was 12 patients. Oh, my God. Okay. Wait, 12 and then to 900? To 900. <gasps> yeah. Like, within only a few years. Yeah. So it was, like, far too much. Um, so another fun fact is this place is known as the Dakota Sanatorium of Death. <gasps> no, not of death. Of death, yeah. Um, yeah, and it's also known to be one of the most haunted places in North Dakota. So that's good. So good. So good. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't expect anything else. No, of course from not. From something Absolutely named not. that. Exactly. Like. Not of death. Exactly. <laughs> um, so let's see here. Okay, so, sorry, I keep losing my spot real bad today. So, as, you know, we're talking about, we're we're throwing it back to the tuberculosis times. Um, And they were, this is before the cure, so they were trying to do everything they could to treat these people, you know, so they could try to live, at least. And so, apparently, at this specific hospital, the most common remedy for tuberculosis was to surgically collapse one lung. (gasps) Oh! Now, how what? how does that help at all? I wish I could tell you. I wish I could tell you. I tried to look it up. Couldn't find it. Like, like I don't think that it did help. Does that just make kill it, it faster? Worse? Honestly, is what I'm assuming. Kill them faster because now they only have one lung to breathe out of instead of two. Right. The only thing that might make sense is that like if the tuberculosis was only in one lung, then maybe that would make sense. But I don't know. I just don't know. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Um, And as we just talked about, the most common treatment other than that, like borderline regular everywhere, um, was for just being outside in the fresh air. Um, So there are actually many ghost stories today saying that people will just see other people, like when they're there, um, walking around outside the front of the building. And then they'll like turn and look away and they'll look back and they're gone. So, yeah, people think that those are just like the ghosts of these patients who are just stuck like in the pattern, like. Kind of like we talked about last week, how ghosts can just, like, kind of replay a memory. Mm -hmm. That's what they think is happening here with those people out in the front. So that's kind of sad. Kind of very sad. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now moving on from the tuberculosis hospital um, to the um, sanatorium, the mental hospital, they... um, it's so sad that as even though I just told you that they are collapsing people's lungs, right, as a treatment, which right. is obviously not good. 
but the treatment of these mentally ill patients were far, far worse than t- the tuberculosis patients. Um, people, especially back then, like to take advantage of like people, you know, of the, at quote unquote, the feeble minded, as they oh, say. No. Yeah. And so they would just absolutely um, torture the people in this place. And they literally had a room that apparently that they would like go for, not go for, go to when they got in trouble. And they would call, they had a sign on the outside of it, and they would call it the school for the feeble-minded. Like, just to make fun of them. That's just so awful. Like, it's why so they, not funny. Like, I don't get why people have to put down others just because they're... That's what I'm like, saying. Like, different. Like, I don't like, know. They're fam, struggling. Fam, they're there to get help. You're gonna, no, exactly. You're going to make fun of them? They can't help it. It's awful. Um. So, you know, as I also said... The population of this place is growing and growing and growing. So as more and more patients are coming in, they have to keep expanding the property because obviously the one building is not enough. So today there are large, several, several large buildings um, that make up the San Haven Sanatorium and all of the buildings are connected by underground tunnels. Oh, which is we just love, honestly, we love an underground yeah, tunnel. Though. We sure do. Um, it's honestly the ultimate spook magoop factor. In my mm-hmm. opinion, um, to yes. have an underground tunnel. Yeah, so, as I already said, there's a lot of, like, experiments and really bad treatment going on in the um, hospital. So, I have to assume that, like, there couldn't be much better things going on in these tunnels. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, you're right. I was excited by the tunnels, but now I'm, I'm just like, yeah. they're, they're not good. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's good. Um, And today, actually, there is a group of former employees and residents who completely deny all of the mistreatment and neglect, which is unbelievable because there are so many documents and photos that, like, people had to go in and when they shut this place down, like, complete evidence that shows Mm -hmm. how bad these people were being treated, like, no food, no water, some people were chained to things. Like, it was... Oh, my God. It was really bad. Like, I, almost I as if it this. was, like, a prison. But it was not prison. Not even at all. Like, it was supposed to be a hospital. Yeah. Right. Like, why was this so common, too? That's what I'm saying. Like, like it in, makes no sense. Like, you're supposed to go there to get help, and they just, like, just so, punish you. <laughs> so mean. Like, so mean. And I, I think it's just because people are mean, and they thought that they could get away with it. And they did get away with it yeah but yeah which is just crazy because nobody goes and checks up on no their their mental no Ill like they don't care family members about stuff. them which is just even more sad even more sad um so today i know i already mentioned um the san haven sanatorium is abandoned so you can go i'm not recommending you go in fact i'm very much so recommending you don't go because it's super <laughs> dangerous and we'll get yeah. into that more later but um I ended up down a rabbit hole on YouTube watching people go and explore this place. It was so scary. Like, those YouTube videos are so scary. But, like, those videos of people exploring abandoned places Mm -hmm. are always, like, so cool. They're so cool. Those are, like, my favorite types of videos. Like, I'd rather watch a video of it than actually do it myself because, you know, if you're there yourself, then it's, like extra scary because what if there's somebody there that's gonna yeah what if there's something i mean there's so many like what if i fall through what if i get arrested like there's so many but it's like the fact that they are uploading this video okay well they're alive at least exactly like they're okay so (laughs) yeah yeah. that's so true so i watched so many of those i do have a question when did this when did this place um like stop being a thing (laughs) in let's see 1987 1987. Okay. Yeah, so it has been there for about 45 years. Okay. Just deteriorating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, not good. Not good at all. Um, so, as I said, I went down a YouTube rabbit hole and I ended up watching so many videos of people going there. And then, you know how, like, the YouTubers do. They'll go, like, interview people in the town and stuff. So, I have some things to say about that. There was this one lady um, that was a nurse at the hospital which was a mentally, like, the mental asylum at, like, when she worked there. And she said that, first of all, they had to use the tunnels every day to just Mm -hmm. get back and forth in between the buildings. 
Right. But that every single time she went down there, she had the absolute worst feeling in the whole world. Like, uh, completely unexplainable. Oh, my God. She said that nothing even happened to her down there. But she just felt horrible, like, physically sick. And so that she would always take somebody with her because she said there was no choice. Like, you didn't have a choice to not use the tunnels. You had to. So she said she never, ever, not even one time went alone. So that is I mean, scary. I just want to know, what do these tunnels look like? I don't know. Oh, they didn't go down. Well, I mean, that would be really creepy to go down to this I don't think you can go down there. Then... I don't think you can. Because I'm hmm. going to, these, the buildings today are completely falling apart. Literally, my next bullet is that while she's telling this story, there are literally bricks falling in the background. And at first, like the YouTuber thought it was a ghost or something. No, it's literally just the building falling apart. <gasps> oh, my God. So... Like, in, like inside, it's completely graffitied, like, completely destroyed. Like, people have been in and out of there for almost 50 years. So, mm-hmm. I think the tunnels are covered up by, like, actual piles of bricks. So, I'm sure you could get okay. down there if you really tried, but I would not recommend it. <laughs> I right. really wouldn't. Um, so, um, let's see here. Okay, and also, every single story, every video, everything I've found based on this place every single person says that when they like enter the location like just get on the property they just feel a horrible feeling and that it like can make people act not like themselves and i'm like (gasps) what does that even mean like yeah that that is not good (laughs) no not good at all um so, it's commonly said that the first floor is haunted by a man who hung himself near the end of World War II, as well as a young girl who also committed suicide on the f- first floor, and that apparently, like, these two are besties in the afterlife, which oh, I think is really okay. cute. Yeah, that uh, um, is actually really like cute. Like, it's sad, obviously. <laughs> but there's always, like, good and Exactly. I mean, not always, Ex- but there's sometimes yeah. good and the bad. <laughs> exactly. Like, and they're always seen together, like, like literally just like a, a man and, like, a younger teenage girl. Yeah. Like, ugh, like my heart is hurting for them, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what is interesting is that, like, these buildings, even though, like, t- you can, like, there are tons of, there's pictures people have taken, just, like, seen so many people walking around when nobody's there. Like, so that's one thing you're going to see, is if you go there, you're going to see a ghost walking. Yeah. Like, more than likely. But that none of them are like evil like they're they're not doing anything bad um mostly they're just most of the time they're just walking literally like you're just walking (laughs) so that's you know that's good but what people do say is that the basement is a completely different story and that most people believe that there's an extremely evil spirit that lives down there that has been down there from even before the time that this was like built oh my god so like what does that mean the devil I don't really know, but... So, was there anything there beforehand? Not that people have found, because people have tried to research, like, you know, was this, like, some kind of burial grounds or something, like, something evil. Yeah, yeah. And not that anybody can find, but what we do know, the only thing that people have found, was that all over the property, there are, like, large holes filled with bodies of unmarked (gasps) graves, and it's just, like, the people who died there... But, like, that is so bad. And I'm like, is it just all these people's energies that are making it that evil? Like, I don't know, man. I mean, maybe. But, like, I thought you said these people were so nice. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, the people who are seen are nice. But, like, for some reason in the basement, it's different. Yeah. And there's no explanation to that either. So, I guess it is a little bit of a mystery. But, ooh, creepy. Um, So... Let's see here. Okay, so today, fast forward to um, 2001, um, and even like today right now, there are tons of people who go here just to, because they can, apparently it's really easy to access, not that I'm, again, encouraging you to go, but apparently you can easily go and explore this place, Um, but as I have mentioned multiple times, it is extremely dangerous, okay? It is, it is not good. It yes, is. see, we're it not is. advising. No, please do not go. Like, genuinely, please do not go. Because, I mean, as I said, the bricks the bricks are falling, literally, as they're making this video. It's going to yeah. collapse in any second. 
Um, and back yeah, in 2001. See, see, just go look, watch the video. Just watch the video. Be good. It's the same exact experience. Like, except without the ghost. <laughs> well, yeah. But, like, you don't need to just go anywhere else for a ghost, honestly. Um, so, back in 2001, a 17-year-old boy actually died while, <gasps> um, like, it, just investigating this place with his friend. Um, he, as I said, he was just with his friend. And they were just chilling, you know. Walking around and about at night, probably making a YouTube video, honestly. Um, and he ended up falling through an open elevator shaft that he like didn't see. I guess he thought it was like a wall and it was a large elevator shaft and he fell and he tragically died. And it is also said that his ghost still haunts the sanatorium today. And oh. that's because like people have actually seen him oh. and it like looks like him. So I'm like, huh. that's sad um, that is so sad it's but so like sad. he like he didn't like he was really just trying he was just having fun and he mm-hmm. got hurt really bad so really really genuinely don't go here yeah it seems really dangerous and, but i mean if you what if you did want to see the ghost you could just stay outside though right? exactly you can see the ghost outside you don't have to go in you don't have yeah. to go in <laughs> don't go in um so i know i've been literally saying this whole time like don't go in however Okay. However, wow, you're gonna go no, back on what you're saying? No, 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 no. Just a little caveat, little okay, okay. deal. Um, the town, um, officially on paper, is destroying this building in six months. Oh, to the wow. ground. Wow. So if you ever wanted to go here, now is in fact the time, because it won't be there for much longer. Okay, but just go outside. Do just, not go inside no, the yeah. building. Don't go inside. Just genuinely don't go inside. Um, so, um, yeah, that really is the legend of the San Haven Sanatorium. See, that's so... I love... I don't love sanatoriums, but, like, <laughs> these stories are just so interesting. Right. It's just... Uh, and it's they're just, just so me. sad, but they're so interesting. Yeah. To look at. Like, ugh, I just want to go back and help those people honestly i know i just i don't know i i already know like a little bit about you know what happened in those type of facilities but it's just i just need to go do a little more digging to see like why were people so why are people so mean like why though i just want to know like the reasoning i know (laughs) just because you can be cruel to them just because you can they were right but like that's crazy like i have crazy thoughts like, sometimes, like, I want to hurt people if they do me wrong. But, like, I'm not going to do it. And <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, I'm especially not going to do it to somebody who can't really help themselves. Exactly. <laughs> like, that's just, that's crazy. So cool. Like, and if people are out here thinking about, like, like that today, oh, no. That's not a good. It's not good. Yeah. Not at all. I wonder if when they knock this down, they're going to build something else on top. That's what I want to know. And they better not do that. And also, they better if they better fill in the tunnels. <laughs> yeah because if true. they if they build something on top of that and you can go into the tunnels can you imagine the only thing that i feel like they're not going to build anything on top of it because it really is in the middle of nowhere that's the okay. only thing that like gives me a little bit of hope but i'm like maybe we should go visit once they knock it down yeah see what the vibes are i mean are. it seemed like you were saying that it's really pretty the area yeah, apparently it's really pretty yeah yeah so hmm. yeah i don't know I don't really know, but um, go check out our Instagram to see pictures from mm-hmm. this place. And Lord knows what pictures you're, we're going to find for D.B. Cooper. I surely don't know. Oh, I know. I'm going to show the, um, they have like a composite drawing of him. Oh, yes. Good. Of, like what they think he looks like. Good. So I'll, I'll put that up. Be on the lookout if you see any 80-year-old men that kind of look like this. <laughs> 80 <Yeah>. to 90. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I guess that's really all I have for you guys this week. What about you, Savannah? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Okay, well, I guess we will see you guys next week. All right. Cue the music. <laughs>